Hi, um, this is Charlie. Let's spend just a moment here talking about the Angular Resolve assignment. This will be just maybe enough for us to get a, a, a little review of what we went over in class and just a few things to help us remember what's going on. So one thing to start with, we've got CouchDB running here in the background and we're going to put data into here. And then over here, we've got an HTML file. We set up the viewport to work with mobile devices. We load Bootstrap to give us a pretty look and have compatibility with mobile devices. Um, we've got a little bit of a style sheet of our own, nothing important in there. Um, we're loading jQuery, the JavaScript for Bootstrap, then we load Angular, Angular Roots, which is sort of the focus of this particular assignment, and then um, our custom JavaScript file. <clears throat> and we'll come over here and we'll go ahead and start the program. And you'll notice that when we first boot up, um, there's no data in the database at all. It's completely empty. We're running NodeMine over here so that we can make changes if necessary. And then we'll come over here. We'll go to our program. And at first, nothing's happened. That's because we haven't created the data yet. So we'll go back here and create the data. And it says it successfully created it. So if we come back over here, we can see the data was inserted into, um, into our database. And you'll want to put different data in here, but we were able to get a first name and a last name in here, <clears throat> which will work for the demo here. And then over here, we'll, we'll come back and now that we've got some data in the database, we refresh the view. And then you can see that we were able to pull the data out and display it um, up here. Now let's go back and look at our HTML for just one second so we can remember a little bit about what we're doing here. Um, the only thing we added in here, this was just the nav bar at the top, part of Bootstrap. It's not really part of our program here. All we've done in here is set up a module and set up a, a, a view, okay? And we're appending data to all of these so that we don't get errors, little squigglies inside of uh, Eclipse while we're working. So now let's come over to index.js and we've got our config here, okay? And we're setting up a root, which is the one we were just going to. That's the root that's going to get called when we just go to the root of our program when we go to slash when there's nothing happening in our program which as you recall is what we're doing here remember the way angular works it does this funny looking trick here when it's setting up these roots with the pound sign slash which is just to be compatible with older versions of html um, so that it doesn't try to go back to the server and grab a new page <clears throat> it just uh, takes it as a parameter whatever we're passing in so it doesn't try to actually go back to the server and get a new page because the whole point of this is that it's dynamic. And we'll come back over here. There's a second view, which we could get at through view two, but we're not going to go through that in this video. That would be just something you would set up. In view one, the first view goes over to an HTML file, which is part of our project. And this is a little template that we add into our project. And view one looks like this. It's simple HTML, which is going to get plunked into our code right here where the data view is because this is a sort of a model view controller angular and here's where we put in the uh, view where we've got um, a little placeholder for the full name and we do an ng repeat here to um, see there we get the little squiggly because we don't have data in front of it so if we put the data then the little squigglies go away okay well yellow underlined bit Okay, so and then that's our customer and customer. So the full name part is the one that comes out here. Here's the full name part. And then the repeat here is where we see the customer and we're only seeing one customer, which has our Susie and Frederick and the rest of this is just the name of the data and um, just metadata that's part of the pro part of it. So let's go back here now and, and look again at this. So we our template is view 01, then we define which controller we're going to work with. And up here, we actually define the controller. So we link between this view and this controller. So it was as if up here we had an ng controller in this chunk of code, this div, 
because this div, the scope of it, is our controller, is this particular controller that we're defining right here. And you'll notice this controller gets past two bits of information, bar and foo, and we're concerned with bar. In this instruction you would pass in bar, you would pass the CSV stuff, and we're concerned with foo, excuse me, we're concerned with foo, which will be our, um, <clears throat> the data that we read from the database. So CSV in, in bar and the data in, um, in the database, the CouchDB in foo. And then you can see the most important part here of the code, or an important part of the code, is this resolve section here, which allows us to use <clears throat> a promise. And as you recall in Angular, we can get access to the promise technology by having this dollar sign Q here. And we, that gives us access to the technology that's built into Angular. And then we use dollar sign Q defer to get a hold of the object that we're going to work with when we do our promise. And then we return the promise itself um, from this code, um, from this method here, foo. And remember, here's where we set up foo. We say in resolve, go to mycontroller.foo. Do you see how this is my controller? When we first declared the controller, we saved an instance of it. And now we're adding onto it this thing foo. And we're saying right here um, that my controller foo is the thing that we want to have resolved. It's the promise that we really care about here. And so foo, what it does is it calls read, all right? And then it's going to get back some JSON, and then that JSON will be returned. And what it amounts to is that foo up here will end up carrying that JSON, all right? So let's go back and look at that. We're going to call read. The call to read will return some JSON, the JSON gets reset to the resolve section of our promise, and that means that this promise will get, a, will get the JSON. And the whole point of this, of the promise, is that we are promised that this method, the controller, will not be called until um, foo is ready. In other words, until we've made our call. Now, what is read? Read is a call into the database. So first we call create which allowed us to create the data in the database, and we stuck in the record, the Susie Frederick in the age. So that created the database, and then read reads from the database. Remember, we're using Nano to Nano, which is a library which wraps um, the functionality that's built into CouchDB, the HTTP service. It's just a little way of making REST HTTP calls. And we'll go ahead and we'll make those. And we call read. And the read call goes out, goes to the database, gets the data. And then um, it gets the data. And then if there's an error, this block gets done. Otherwise, um, we simply return the data and send the response. No, no, that's what happens if there's an error. That's our error message, I'm sorry. And here, if no error, then we send this. I'm, I'm really tired, but I wanted to make this movie for you. And so here is this not error, which is where we send the response back. And it's that response that gets sent back that ends up here in our JSON with a promise. So it's the thing that gets resolved with a promise. Then that data comes up here. It gets assigned to the customers, which means that inside the scope of U1, customers is going to be equal to our JSON. And the JSON is just a single record, but if it had been multiple records, then we could, then our HTML would iterate over that because we do a repeat for each customer and customers, but there's only one and we get that customer and we display it to the user. And when we display it to the user, it looks like this. Here's that customer. It's the name of the doc. Here's the 38, here's Susie, here's Frederick. Okay, that's all I wanted to say. Just a quick message about the way this stuff works. Angular and resolves and views and promises and um, routes, very important stuff. Um, you know, really 
almost the crucially most important stuff was the routing, which I didn't, you know, I, I, I showed it to you, but I didn't explicitly talk about it. We, we get the route provider, which is that part from the Angular. Remember when we, we included <clears throat> Angular routes over here? And so um, when we, that gives us the route provider and it's the route provider when method that say when we get this route, then put up this view. And when we get this route, then put up the other view. Okay. Um, thank you so much and have a good day. Enjoy yourselves. Okay. Have fun computing.